To all, it is a beautiful day of the Lord, is it not? Amen. He is risen, everyone. He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet and give the Lord praise. On your feet, everybody. On your feet. Hallelujah. He is worthy of this and so much more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a great service today. We have a lot in store for you. Pastor Tom's message is timely and heartwarming. And I ask that you do that. You clear your mind. You open your hearts. Receive the spirit of the Lord that is here today. You know, when we were picking songs for Easter Sunday, of course, there's some that you guys notice in the bulletin are ones that are sung on this day. But you know what? What song isn't appropriate for each and every Sunday? Because it should always be about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing Blessed Be Your Name. And we would like you guys to shake each other's hand, meet somebody that you haven't seen in a while, members of the worship team. And by the way, we are common union for those that have not been to church in a little bit. They will be walking around. You'll notice them. They're the ones with the headsets on. Give them, give them, a, a, give them a hug, give them a thanks, whatever you want to do. But we're going to usher in the Spirit of the Lord by singing, Blessed Be Your Name.
God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the blessing that is your name. When we say Jesus, hallelujah, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord of both heaven and earth. Be with us now, be with us always. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor Tom. Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate our resurrected Jesus Christ on this Easter Sunday morning. What a glorious Sunday it is because now the chains are off. We can celebrate our Lord. We can celebrate the new life that God has intended for each of us. So welcome, especially those who are visiting with us. We are certainly glad you are here this morning. If you're first time here, there's information in the back if you want to know more about the church. But for now, it's time to worship our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Y'all may be seated. As it's noticed in the program, or it's noted in the program, we are going to start off with Christ the Lord as risen today. That is a tradition, not only here at Fields, but in churches across America and across the world, I would anticipate. But before we do that, Joe Carney's going to have a word of the Lord. Join me in a word of prayer, please. Lord God, we know that we started out this, this week, Lord, with your servants being with you, and, and Lord, you washed their feet. And, and Lord, there were some of those who, who felt that that shouldn't happen, but, but you proved to us, you showed us that, that our mission is to serve. And then, Lord, on, on that night when, when they came to arrest you, and, and, and Lord, they did terrible things to you, Lord God, we cried with you. We cried for you. And then, and then, of course, Lord, we, we cried because, because you were taken away from us. But Lord, today, today we are exalted in knowing, Lord God, that you have been risen up. And because of that, we too can be raised. We too are guaranteed a life that goes forever. And Lord, we are ever so thankful for that. Lord God, be with us today as, as we praise your name. Lord God, bring the Holy Spirit upon us. And, and Lord God, help us to lift your name on high. A name that is like no other and can be like no other. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord is risen today.
I can? I think somebody's got it. Richard's got it. Richard's got it. Oh, okay. That was my fault. I didn't know how many verses we were doing. Thank you. That's the only reason sometimes, even if they can sing with us, it was just kind of like a special. It was this time. Morning, everyone. Good morning, Ben. <laughs> Everybody say hi, Ben. One, two, three. Hi, hi Ben. ben. <coughs> Who are those weird people? If you will see them, we'll hear the first greeting of the day. This gospel reading is from uh, Colossians chapter 3. Paul tells us the rules for holy living after the, after the Christ is risen. He says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above. Where Christ is seated at the night, at the right hand of God, set your minds on things above. Not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also appear with him in glory. So hear the word of the Lord. Thank you, Richard. This next song that we're doing, Miss Judy introduced it to us. It's called Every Morning is Easter Morning. And, you know, theoretically, that's correct. Every day should be a day that we celebrate the risen Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. It talks about us being Easter people. Theoretically, again, that is true. We are Easter people. We are spreading the good news of the gospel that Jesus Christ died, but more importantly, rose from the grave so that we can have eternal life. Amen? Amen. Real quick, funny story. We all learned this song. All of us here. Miss Judy introduces it. Has anybody ever heard of this song? Not a hand went up. But we were willing to learn it because... it. it it's neat. It's fun, and you guys are going to enjoy it. Well, wouldn't you know it, today, Jenny McKeague was here at the first service, and she comes up to me and says, does that song, every morning that is Easter morning that you're singing, go like this? And she wrapped off the words. <laughs> and I'm looking at her like, you know this song? And she's like, we used to sing it in youth choir. So the one person, unless there's other people that know it, is there anybody that's ever heard this song before? That's what I thought. The one person that knows the song isn't here to help us, so... <laughs> We're going to just ask that you would sit back, relax, and enjoy it, Miss Judy. A little bossa nova beat ain't going to hurt nobody. Hello, Lord. Hello, Son. I want to be Easter people. My new life has begun. Every morning is Easter morning from now on. Every day is resurrection day. The past is over and gone. Daily news is so bad it seems. The good news seldom gets heard. Get it straight from the Easter people, God's in charge, spread the word. Every morning is Easter morning from now on. Every day is resurrection day, the past is over and gone. Yesterday I was poor and lonely, but today look and see. I belong to the Easter people, life exciting to me. Every morning is Easter morning from now on. Every day is resurrection day, the past is over and gone. Every morning is Easter morning, every morning is Easter morning. Every morning is Easter morning. From now on. It's a good tune. I like that. 
Well, once again, welcome. It is a joy to be in God's house this day to celebrate the new life that God has given to each and every one of us. And that's the joy of our faith, the joy of believing, the joy of gathering as the family of God. And, and during this Easter season, uh, we do gather as our own families, but remember that we are all connected because of the resurrection. And that's the joy we celebrate this day. And really... When I think about our life, our life together, it's all because of Jesus. And that is the joy that, that we witness uh, this day. Uh, many joys that surround us, the joy of a new day, new opportunities, uh, new ministries, new ways of reaching out to the least and the lost. Uh, also, we need to lift up to God those things that uh, really challenge our souls and and lay deep within our hearts. And so we need to pray for those who are homebound and sick and hospitalized, and we need to pray for those who are in need of God's healing this day. Are there other uh, requ prayer requests here this morning or joys you'd like to share this day? Celebration for Mark and Abby and their first baby. All right. Anyone else? Let's then go to God in silent prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this Easter Sunday as we gather in your house to give you thanks and praise for the blessings of this day, the blessings of our eternal life, our, our very salvation. It's all wrapped up in your empty tomb, Lord God, and, and that's why we come here this day to give you thanks and praise um, for the gift of eternal life. Lord God, as we, we gather around, you have driven us out of that empty tomb uh, to look around and see you uh, in the flesh, Lord God, for you have promised uh, that your word became flesh and dwelled among us, and so it has and so it will to the end of time. And, and so this day, we celebrate being Easter people. We celebrate uh, being washed from our sin, that we may sin no more and, and go forth in your name. And Lord God, we, we give you thanks also for the hope that you offer to us this day of a, of a new day, a new beginning. Because Lord God, sometimes our, our lives are not how they ought to be. Sometimes, Lord God, we, we wander away from, from your word. And sometimes, Lord God, we, we do things that ought not to be done or said things that ought not to be said, Lord God. But because of your cross, because of your sacrifice for us, those things are a thing of the past, Lord God. And, and you have washed us whiter than snow that we may begin this new life. Lord God, we, we thank you for our resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ, who suffered, died, and was resurrected so we can be here this day. Lord God, we, we joyfully proclaim your name, but also readily acknowledge that things are not all well in the world, and so we need to lift all your people up, Lord God, who are hurting this day. Those who are besieged by natural disasters and disasters of human origin, Lord God, we, we just pray your watch care, your presence, your power, your love, your healing, and your peace in those times. Lord God, we pray for our great nation, and we pray for our communities. We, Lord, we pray for our schools, and we pray for our children. We pray for our neighbors, Lord God, because you called us to love them as we love ourselves, Lord God, so we lift all of our neighbors up to you this day. Lord God, again, we come with joy, and we also acknowledge, Lord God, that even though we've fallen short, you lift us up, you build us up, you lift us up on eagle's wings, Lord God, that we may uh, continue to, to fly, and we may and soar uh, in glory to you. And now, Lord God, we just pray your Holy Spirit rest upon all those who are in need of your healing presence this day. To those who mourn, give light. To those who are suffering, give 
your healing presence. And Lord God, uh, uh, wash the, the negativity and anything else that may cause us to be further away from you than you would cause, have us to be. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord God, now bless this time of giving that we may be faithful stewards of all that you have offered to us, that we may give back a portion to continue your ministry in the world around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Expecting lots of kids today. This might be a record so far this year. Good morning. It's Easter morning. Good morning. Good morning. Crack a smile. Are you in a sugar coma? No? Too much sugar. Yeah. You're too excited. Okay. Well. Today, of course, is Easter morning, and I have a glass here of punch or juice. Yeah, it smells like Kool-Aid or something. What do you like about this glass? Kelsey? It's red. It is red. What about how much it, it is or is not filled up? Caden? It's, yeah, it's about halfway full. Anyone say it's half empty? <coughs> Who thinks it's half empty? Okay, let's, let's ask the congregation, the adults, to help us out. Who thinks it's half empty? Oh, man, they're already onto my game. <laughs> Who thinks it's half full? Okay, now, if it's half full, that sounds a little better, right? A little more positive. Not as, not as sad, maybe, as saying it's half empty. That would be a bummer. Now, what if we drink it? Do I have a volunteer who might be thirsty here? Oh, look, all of a sudden, they're all thirsty. All right, let's, let's see here. Oh, Kelsey, I'll give it to you, okay? Is it okay, Mom? Okay, she says go for it. What's sugar today, right? Drink it all. Drink it all. You want to share it with Caden? I'll let you share it with your sister, but nobody else. Hurry, come on, drink it up. Time's a ticking. She is thirsty. 
Got to wash out all those jelly beans, huh? Okay, how was that? All right, now who's happy that it's gone? Oh, yeah. Nobody except Caden, because she got to drink it, right? She's happy. What if, well, we look at this glass and we think, oh, that's a bummer, it's all gone now, right? It's kind of sad. What if we changed our thinking, though, and looked at this empty glass and we were happy that it was empty? Now, how can we be happy that it's empty? What's something to be happy about? Kelsey? Okay, it's, it's gone, so it's in Caden's body, it's nourishing her, it's hydrating her. What else? She enjoyed it. We can be happy for her. That she, did you enjoy the juice? Yeah, so it takes a little, a little work to change our thinking and be happy, happy about something that would otherwise be something sad. Let's think about that empty tomb. How many of you are happy that it's empty? Yeah. You know, when um, a woman named Mary arrived, arrived, um, arrived to the tomb, and she, she had, well, she later brought two disciples with her, they had different feelings. The Bible tells us that Mary was sad. She was weeping. What does that mean? She was crying. Um, the other disciples, one was kind of curious. He went in, and another, he believed. He wasn't sad and, and he, because he knew that God's, will had been fulfilled. There's some people in our world who may hear the Easter story, the story of, of, of that tomb being empty, and they may be sad, or they may be curious, because they don't, they don't really know. They've, maybe they've never read the Bible, maybe no one's ever taken them to church, and so they're not sure what to think. But our job is to be happy and to spread the joy. That song that Ben likes, that you were saying that this says the song, um, how does it go? Now I can't think of it. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen king. So we can have a light in us so that everyone can see that we are happy. What's not to be happy about, right? So an empty glass is what? Happy. It's happy. It's good. All right, let's, let's bow our heads and have a quick prayer. Oh, Lord, thank you, thank you. What more is there to say? The sunshine today, the green grass, the flowers, the Easter dresses, the baskets, the candy. But most of all, the empty tomb. Lord, let us be a light, not just today, but let us learn that every day can be an Easter morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What a great crowd. Let us pray. Lord God, this day we celebrate. We celebrate new life. We celebrate the joy that we have witnessed this day. We celebrate these children who have come forth in your name uh, to shine the light on our lives here this day. Most importantly, Lord God, we, we thank you for Jesus who shined the light uh, even within our darkness, Lord God. And now we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to shed light upon us as the scripture is read and proclaimed, that we may be filled with newness of life, with another opportunity, Lord God, to, to know your grace in our lives, Lord God, life-changing words. Uh, Lord God, now your word, may your word come through me, or in spite of me, thank you for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen. The story of our Lord's resurrection according to St. John's Gospel, the 20th chapter. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary the Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there. 
but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that, must, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home. But then there was Mary. She stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. So Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said, to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I'm not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Most of us gathered here this morning have heard these words before. We grew up with the story of the resurrection of Jesus. How Jesus was crucified and on the third day he rose from the dead. And we acknowledge that this is Easter. This is the story of our faith to be sure. So just to recap, Mary the Magdalene goes by early Sunday morning to the tomb just to to mourn the loss of a dear friend, but sees the, the huge stone rolled away from the entrance to the tomb, looks in and doesn't see Jesus and thinking, oh my gosh, what had happened? She goes and tells Peter and the beloved disciple, and they run to the tomb and they look in, and once again they affirm that the body is not there and they go home, and then they go fishing. It doesn't say that in the scripture, but they were fishermen, so I assume they went home and went fishing. Mary thought all was lost until Jesus found her in the garden. She turned around when Jesus called her by name, and she saw her resurrected Savior before her. So as a church... We take this journey of faith to this point through Holy Week, through Holy Thursday, and it's the tradition of this church, the seat and tables of 12, and, and symbolizing the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. Then Good Friday we come and, and we, we mourn this crucifixion of our Lord, of our Jesus. As a community, we walk the cross to remember the walk that Jesus took. Then comes the Easter. We sing Christ the Lord is risen today. We wear nice bright clothes. And we do all these other things. We look forward to the ham, get sick on the candy, pretty much the same as we did every year, right? Then Monday morning, Tuesday for some, we start the same old thing all over again. But saints, it can't be the same. Nothing can be the same after this. Someone once said you can't step in the same river twice because the river is in constant motion. So it is with our lives. Our lives are constantly changing. 
for, and that is the reason we gather today. We gather today because we feel and sense that change. The world is different than it was last year when we gathered. In fact, it was different than it was yesterday or at 6 o'clock this morning. We come here because we know that our world and our lives need a Savior in Jesus Christ more than any time in the past. We know that to be the case. But sometimes we, we kind of follow the path of Mary and the Magdalene and Peter and the beloved disciple and we get caught up in the same old, same old routine. The tomb was empty. Someone stole the body. What do we do? What do we do? The body's not there. Somebody took it. But, you see there's a but every time we look at scripture, but Jesus changes that game. Jesus makes things new because our lives change. Jesus has changed things up for us as well. Oh, we can keep our heads stuck in the dusty old tomb. But it does nothing to witness the joy of believing this day. It does nothing to witness what our resurrected Savior has done in our lives. For our faith hinges on the fact that the tomb was empty. Folks, this is our faith. That's what we are all about. You see, it's not about music stands. It's not about anything like that. It's not about the building. It's about the fact that Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead so that we can live. If it wasn't the case, then this church would be nothing more than a social club. Now, we get together once in a while and sing some tunes, share a potluck or two, and a few laughs, donuts, coffee, whatever you might want. That's what the church would be if there was no resurrection. If there was no resurrection, no Easter celebration, there'd be no reason for Christmas because why would we celebrate a poor child being born in squalor in the middle of the desert because that happened all the time back then. If there was no resurrection then we would be people most to be pitied, in the words of St. Paul. But folks, we can testify this morning that the fact is that tomb was empty 2,000 years ago because Jesus Christ rose from the dead that we might live, that Jesus, first of all, hung on the cross, washed away our sin by his blood, and rose again. That's what it's all about. And because of the resurrection, we can affirm that even though we lost someone near and dear to us, and we mourn that loss in our human heart, we can share in their victory. Because just as Jesus was re resurrected, so were they. We can affirm that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. That everyone who lives and believes in him will never die. We can make that affirmation that everybody who lives and believes in him will never die. One thing Jesus didn't do, Jesus didn't qualify salvation. You see, eternal life belongs to everybody. Everybody. If you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and life, you see, this morning it's all about Jesus. It's all about the power of the resurrection. 
It's all about our lives changing not only today, but here on out. Remember several years ago, there was a mantra and was all, on all kinds of wristbands, what would Jesus do? You saw it. WWJD. I'm not very good with that and those types of things, so I looked at WWJD. What does that mean? You ever do that? But everybody was wearing those wristbands and, and put uh, bumper stickers. What would Jesus do? Well, this is what Jesus did. And that's what we affirm. What Jesus did, Jesus died on the cross on the third day, rose from the dead defeated the darkness of the tomb so we don't have to live there anymore. We don't have to live in the darkness. We live in the light of our resurrected Savior. And we live that life not sometime in the future, but today, if we believe. And if we believe, we also recognize that our neighbor is anyone for whom Christ died. It's a big group. That is the world, by the way. We need to witness this act of grace in our lives. For the last month or so, I don't know about you, but I was wondering what in the world's happening in our world. We have kids killing kids. We have adults killing kids. We have people turning over cars for no other reason than a, a team won a basketball game. No other reason than just time the party. We have people hating each other for no reason, but that they're there. We have people who just, it's, it's amazing. Haven't you felt that? If you watch the news, you see, well, what is going on? Saints, the world needs our resurrected Savior. The world needs the grace of God today. So how do we do that? How do we witness to the world around us this joy? Well, number one, I think we all got to lighten up just a little bit. Maybe a lot. Of course, I'm saying lightening up and I have a suit and a tie on. I, that to me is a little bit problematic, but this is a special day. When I was swimming, we used to just go like this. You just used to go like this, getting all loosened up and limbered up to go. And maybe that's what we ought to do. We ought to lighten up. We ought to realize that this word that had become flesh and dwelled among us is real. It is powerful. It is life-changing. It is eternal life-changing. And that is something we need to celebrate. We need to acknowledge that this word, too, is for everybody. Folks, it's a new game. Because the game has changed in our world. Oftentimes, we think and we hear what people think the church stands for. We forget the resurrection. We forget the joy of believing. We forget this incredible word that has the power to heal, the power to save, the power for us to keep on going. So what does the church stand for? The church stands for grace. The church stands for sharing the grace of God with the world as Christ was shared with us. And we need to live it as a church. When we come here on Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning, and we sing, Christ the Lord is risen today, saints, that has to mean something. 
And it does. It means eternal life. It means a change of attitude. And a change of attitude, everything about it, our lives change because Jesus Christ is risen today. It means something different than just wearing bright clothes, lilies on the altar, brunch at one. It means that God's grace has been given to everybody. So instead of trying to figure out what would Jesus do, Let's consider what Jesus didn't do this morning. He didn't hang on a cross and die for a chosen few. Someone called the chosen frozen, but I choose not to go in that direction. He didn't hang on a cross to die and was resurrected on the third day to bar folks from the kingdom based on whether the person was rich or poor, white or black, married or single, of a particular political affiliation, of nationality or sexuality or denominationality, Sorry, teachers, that's not a word, but maybe it should be. I'm not sure. <laughs> Ethnicity, or which Bible translation you tend to like the best, you see, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Jesus died and didn't bar folks for how they like to praise God, for what hymns to sing or not to sing, or what instruments to use or not, what not instruments to use, whatever it takes. You see, Jesus didn't bar the kingdom of God from anybody. Because Jesus said, if you live and believe in me, everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. There's no different translation to the word everyone. Jesus hung on a cross, and the tomb was empty for all who believe. Oh, that, those things that Jesus didn't say. It goes on and on. You see, Jesus didn't bar anyone from the kingdom. How you dress. How you wear your hair. Or whether you don't have hair. You see... Because we come here and joyfully proclaim that Jesus Christ is risen today. And the power of the resurrection frees us from the judgment of others and frees us from the seeming obligation and the need to judge others. And that happens if we allow the Spirit of God to intercede in our lives. You see, that's what Easter's all about, saints. Easter is about new beginnings. Easter is about eternal life that begins when we profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And that is the key. So we have a choice this morning. And we have a challenge this morning. We could, we could wallow in the tomb, kind of like Mary started out for a while. You know, Peter and John, the beloved disciple. We could wallow for a while. We could stay in the dark for a while. We have that choice. We can do that. We can stay with this, with, 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 our feelings about other people or about what they do or what they don't do and all that kind of stuff. We can be in that tomb doing the same old things with the same old thoughts about other people and the world. Or, 
here's the opportunity and here's the challenge. We can do something new. We can do something brand new. We can celebrate. We can bring joy and we can bring happiness and we can bring peace into our sin-sick soul because of the empty tomb. We can celebrate. There is a choice. We can offer the same grace that has been offered by our resurrected Savior. And we can begin that today. Saints, we need that. The world needs it more than ever before. The world needs the word of God and the people of God to rise up and celebrate what it means to live in our resurrected Savior. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Amen. We need to keep up the celebration there, Chuck. We're going to. We're going to. We're going to do it. I, I was with you all the way through. Just to let everybody know, sometimes, sometimes I like to sit in the easy chair in the back. But, you know, I was with you, Tom, from start to finish. But then the, I didn't quite get the hair reference. I didn't, I didn't get it. Chuck, you know, I, got it. I had to include all those people with hair. Oh, okay. You know. You were being inclusive. I was being inclusive. In <laughs> Amen. You know, the, the, the song that we're going to close with today um, is He Lives. And it's perfect for what Tom just spoke about. He lives not for a certain set of people, not for a certain age demographic or geographic locale or any of those things. He lives for all of us to experience the oneness that he died for us to have. Amen? Amen. I was reading today, as I'm sure a lot of you have as well, the different gospel accounts of the risen Lord. And what intrigued me today, and Tom touched on it, was this was from John chapter 20. When Mary went to the tomb, saw the linen folded, looking for the Lord, couple things actually got me. She turns, the angel says, whom are you looking for? As we know the story goes, he is no longer here, he has risen. But this particular account, she thought whom she was talking to was the gardener, and she realized at that moment when her eyes were open that that was the risen Lord in front of her. And she grabbed him, and the first thing that he said is don't cling to me in this state. That's what really hit me today. Mm. Don't cling to Christ before he's accomplishing everything that he has for your life. He may have done great and extraordinary things today. He may continue to do those things. But if we cling to any one aspect of who Christ is other than our Lord and our Savior, unfortunately, we'll go stagnant in our faith. And she heard it first from jo uh, she heard it first from Jesus, and she didn't. She let him go because in order for him to go, that was how she was going to receive eternal life because he did not ascend as he said to the Father. So stand with us as we celebrate the risen Lord. This is in. We're going to have the words up on the board, but if you guys are old, um, got to have a hymnal in front of me. It's number three ten. Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever place they stay. I feed his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives.
lives. He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me, a love life never away. He lives, he lives, he lives Christ Jesus can do in part. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving stare. And though my heart goes weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading the hell of a stormy blast. And the day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujah to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find. So good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know. Father God, we thank you for living. We thank you for dying. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to have the same power that raised you from the dead available 24-7, anytime, anywhere, in any situation. Father, today is a glorious day, not because the sun is shining and because the temperatures are warming, but because you reside in our hearts. And may you continue to do that as we go about our week, as we usher in the beginning of a new month, and close out yet another month. Time moves so quickly, Lord, and it's all the more important for us to continue, as Tom said and always says, to have those opportunities and seize the moment for us to get it right. Father God, may we be a light and a beacon and an instrument for someone today. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great amen. week, everybody. Happy, Happy Easter. Happy Easter, everyone.